anniversary events. I was invited to come to this today. What's unique about this gathering, do you feel? Well, I think it's community-led. I think communities are here honoring first responders and remembering the victims of, of that horrific day and, and also offering hope and showing what uh, partnership is all about. Uh, typically here, there's no reference to the motives or the uh, incentives of the attackers. Do you think that, that is a topic that ought to be addressed at 9-11 commemorations? Well, I think it's something we can never forget. I think that uh, while we are beginning to degrade uh, ISIS and Al-Qaeda, uh, there are still violent jihadis that want to dominate the world, that want to create an Islamic state, and want to implement Sharia law, but we will never let that happen. But do you feel that these ceremonies ought to acknowledge, from an educational perspective, the generation is now 15 years later, should it be addressed? Well, I'm going to address it in my remarks today. What will you talk about? I'm going to talk about the two things I hear most. One is uh, never forget, and what does that really mean? What are we never forgetting? And two, are we safer now than we were uh, at 9-11? And I'm going to talk about that a little bit too. And while I'm going to say that, of course, we are safer, we are working better, we are more resilient, but with that said, we cannot be complacent because complacency it could become our biggest enemy. Now, are you the head of counterterrorism in Los I Angeles? I run counterterrorism and special operations bureau. Uh, is there monitoring of mosques around the country? No. And there shouldn't be. Why do you feel that way? Because I think the, uh, you know, 99% of our American Muslim population is a strength of ours. And it should be viewed as a strength and a partnership. And uh, this isn't uh, necessarily a... A Muslim problem, a Christian problem, or a Jewish problem, it's a human problem that everybody needs to wrap their arms around and everybody needs to come together and understand that there is a threat, it's current and it's serious, and we can diminish it and mitigate it by coming together and protecting the values of our country, and that includes Muslim Americans, and they know that. Uh -huh. Uh, is there a, a relationship, a partnership with uh, mosque leadership to report? Absolutely. Here there is in a big way. Um, we, we have great relationships with Muslim American, with Muslim American women, Muslim American youth, and, um, and they, they want to protect and defend this nation as, as much as we do. But isn't it like asking the fox to guard the hen house? Absolutely not. That okay. is a misnomer. Okay. That's political rhetoric, and that's, uh, in my view, that is <coughs> a dialogue that is used to incite and build a hate campaign against a whole population of people, and it weakens our country, not strengthens it. Because how many um, terror events have, have been thwarted as, as a result of information from inside the mosques? From what I've been involved in, quite a few, actually. Within Los Angeles? Yes. And, uh, do you suppose around the country, is there cooperation? From the uh, major cities that, uh, who are my counterparts in the 64 major cities across the United States, it is, in fact, true. Chief Michael Downing, of, uh, our commanding officer of County Terrorism and Special Operations Bureau, uh, he, he sees the worst that can happen every day and still greets you with a smile every single time. And uh, that is a feat. I would like to welcome up here right now. Thank you, and good evening. And, and actually, this is the best uh, that I've seen all day, is, is all of you. So to Sherman Oaks in Los Angeles, uh, thank you for who you are, for who you represent, and for coming together for this special night, and for the, all the firefighters and the fire station here. For the past 15 years, we hear two recurring uh, statements and questions. We hear, never forget, and we hear, are we safer today? For 15 years, those are the two recurring statements and questions. Never forget. Yes, we never forget the human beings that perished in the, in the terrible tragedy, horrific attack, the biggest attack our nation has ever seen. The families, the loved ones that suffer, the first responders that were lost, the first responders that suffer and their loved ones. But we also never forget the love and the friendship.
friendship and the unity and the partnership and the resolve that came out of that crisis. We still feel it and we live it today. That's what we never forget. We never forget all of that. Are we safer today? The threat is definitely more complex than it was 15 years ago. But we are definitely safer today. We've closed some amazing gaps in our security apparatus. We're safer from this spectacular attack that we saw 15 years ago. We're safer from the adversary that's overseas that wants to attack us. We're safer because, one, we have the greatest defensive team in the world, our military. And in my opinion, we have the greatest offensive team that, yeah, give, it a, give a round of hand for our military. Those brave souls that keep the fight overseas, there's no question. And my opinion is that we also have the greatest offensive team here in the United States, and that's you. You're the first, you're the first preventers, the first preventers. And behind me, the firefighters and the police officers, they're the best offensive team as well. So while we remember the tragedy and that horrific day, let's not forget the love and the friendship and the hope and that we may not be a perfect country, but we're a country that is determined to do better, to be better, and to be that beacon of hope that shines across the world that says we will hunt the adversary and we will protect and defend our country, protect and defend the values that make us Americans, and protect and defend the United States Constitution which is the rule of law. All of our communities are our strength. Thank you.